Hi guys, it is Aoife from Freddy's Z Died Laughing and I'm here to do my first weekly wrap up of 2018. And I'm so excited to do this because I had a really, really good reading week this week. So the first book I read in 2018 was Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor and I'm so glad this one was chosen in my Twitter poll um, as for my first book because it was such an amazing read. So this is like a YA fantasy um, series but though there is some of it that is set in the real world and it is about a young girl called Karu. She is about 17 years old and she's a little bit odd. Um, she's like bright blue hair, she's loads of tattoos. She seems to have a bit of an unconventional kind of life. Um, and the reason for that is, is that she was raised by a family of like fantastical creatures called Chimera. She ends up meeting an angel um, and this meeting ends up kind of bringing up a lot of questions um, for crew about who she actually is um, and where she came from because obviously she is a human being raised by Chimera so there is something there in her background that she doesn't know about um, and she has never been told about and she starts figuring out a little bit about her past um, and unlocking things from her past. And in the middle of all of this there is like a war brewing between the angels and the Chimera and crew is kind of stuck in the middle of it. And this is a very hard book to explain to be honest. Um, I didn't really know that much going into it. Um, and I think it's one of those books that you do actually kind of have to go in not really knowing and it's just one of those it's just one of those books that everything becomes clear when you read it it's just really hard to explain um but as you read it everything is just crystal clear everything just makes sense um I just absolutely loved it Lainey, Lainey Taylor's writing is just so beautiful I just adored her writing in this um some of her passages were just breathtaking um and it makes me very excited to read the other books just so I can continue reading her descriptions and some of her the chemistry that she just is able to create between the characters um is amazing I love the fact that there wasn't just like love between characters but a lot of lust as well um and the crew isn't this kind of like perfect virginal character um she is feisty and spunky and a real badass and she's really able to take care of herself but at the same time she understands her need to be loved and she understands her need to belong somewhere um, and there is this vulnerability to her that is really beautiful and really lovely um, and really makes you just feel for her a lot um, and there's so much of the stuff that happened in this is so heartbreaking the end of this book is so heartbreaking um, and I just want to read the next one as soon as I can because this one was absolutely brilliant um, and I'm so glad I finally picked it up and I'm so glad it was my 2018 my first read of 2018 um, and I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. Next book I picked up was The Snow Angel by Lauren St. John which is a book I originally got a few months ago from Head of Zeus in exchange for an honest review and I meant to read it around Christmas time because I thought it for some reason I thought it was going to be kind of Christmassy um, and I actually forgot to pick it up so uh, I actually remembered in the fr it, it during the week and um, so I picked it up straight away after Daughter of Smoke and Bone um, and then as I read it, I realised it actually isn't a Christmassy book it's a little bit wintry but it's the kind of book you could read um, all year round this is a kind of middle grade book um, about a young girl called McKenna who lives in Nairobi in Kenya um, and basically her biggest wish is to climb to the top of Mount Kenya. Her father is a mountaineer, he kind of tour, he's like a tour guide, kind of a mountain guide I should say, um, and she wants to be like him, she wants to climb these mountains for a living, she wants to climb to the top of the mountain um, and that is her biggest wish. Um, and she manages to go on a little bit of an adventure with her dad at the start of this book, but then as soon as she comes home things go really terribly wrong um, and she ends up alone because of this um, and she we see her as she's kind of struggling. She ends up in the slums for a while in Nairobi. She ends up completely on her own um, and then eventually she ends up in Scotland. Um, and through it all, she kind of keeps getting glimpses of this fox, um, of these different species of fox. So it seems kind of like fox is kind of almost like her spirit animal in a way and kind of taking care of her. And there's a very, very small touch of magical realism in this through this fox. But most of this book is just kind of McKenna's journey um, through a terrible thing that happened to her um, and her kind of journey back into living again and loving again. This was just so beautifully written. This was such a lovely, lovely book. I was not expecting this book to be as emotional and beautiful um, as it was. Um, there are some really great scenes in this, really great descriptions of Nairobi, like the markets um, and like streets that like I've never seen before anywhere. Um, the, the slums are mentioned a good bit but at the same time, uh, Lauren St. John, she did say in the back of the book, she didn't want that to be the only kind of bit you like the reader saw of Nairobi she wanted to um describe the very you know the 
everyday living, the people who live in like, you know, normal houses and have normal jobs, like teachers and mountain guides, um, as well as the children who do unfortunately have to live in the slum and the families that do live in the slums. So you're getting like two different sides um, of the country. Um, because it's very easy, I think, to sometimes think of these countries in Africa and think of them being as very poor. But obviously, there are two sides of them. Um, and this book also brought into perspective um, the kind of Ebola crisis of a few years ago. And from a different side of that, like, I would always think about it. Because, you know, we were, we were very privileged in the Western world to think of Ebola and just think of it as one of those things of being scared if it did come over to our side of the world and what we would do um, and it was kind of easy to forget about it once the crisis was kind of over and once the big scare was over where this one kind of shines a light on all the children left behind all the children in the slums and children in the orphanages left behind because their parents have died from Ebola or their family members have all been have all, have all been killed by Ebola um, and it kind of showed it well the kind of it wasn't just kind of the very very poor people and the aid workers and stuff that were killed by Ebola or affected by Ebola it was some very normal people as well like average working day people and um, that just got got caught up in the wrong place um, and managed to uh, get it and yeah it just kind of opened my eyes to some things Um there was also some really nice rep in this for um, albinism there was a character and um, that ha that was an albino um, and she kind of talked a little bit about what it means to be an albino in Africa and the dangers it poses to her and how her mother had to smuggle her out of her village because you know they wanted to sell her or they wanted to do something bad to her anyway and um, just because of superstition um, and some traditions and stuff and um, so yeah you're just getting a lot of like there's just like so much in terms of learning new things in this book um, and also just shining a light in different things which I really really liked. I really liked that it was set partially in Kenya and there's also a part in Scotland but it also managed to weave the similarities between the two countries as well um, and it was done really really well and really beautifully and as I said the language in this was just lovely and um, the descriptions were so, so evocative and just you could just really really visualise the place all the places that McKenna was and all the things that she was feeling and seeing um and it was really great I really enjoyed this book um there were definitely parts in this book that I could feel my emotions like welling up inside of me there was some point in the train where I was just like don't cry don't cry don't cry um I didn't cry but it was close um it was just really really nice four out of five stars really lovely read really quick read um yeah, really enjoyed it. The next book I read was The Battle Mage by Taran Mutharu, and this is the third book in the Summoners uh, trilogy. I've loved this trilogy from the very first book, The Novice, um, and then the second book, The Inquisition, I read in 2016. So it has been a little while in between these two books. Um, so I was kind of picking this up, and I was a little bit... I was a little bit hazy on what had happened in the second book, um, even though I did know that it had happened. It had ended on a big massive cliffhanger um, and I could remember what that cliffhanger was but I was trying to remember kind of the sequence of events that had led up to that cliffhanger and um, so I managed to read a few read and, and watch a few reviews and I kind of refreshed myself there and I'm really glad I did that because I was able to more or less jump into the story and figure out where I was very quickly in the story and um, so this is a YA fantasy and it is about a boy called Fletcher who is able who's called a summoner which means he can summon a demon and um, which kind of becomes his his companion um, and his demon is a little kind of lizardy salamander creature called Ignatius and he has to go to a school to learn how to be a summoner which is basically like magician um, and then he also has to try and protect his country against a uh, army of orcs that want to take over and at the same time he is also trying to stop the prejudice against other races um, in the country like elves and dwarfs who aren't treated as well as they should be um, and there is a bit of like racism and prejudice against dwarves and elves and Fletcher is trying to kind of help his friends who are both an elf and a dwarf um, and yeah so this is the last book well Pretty, the last book in the trilogy but there is a book after this which is technically going to be a prequel um, which is coming out this year uh, which I didn't know until I finished this book and saw that so that is exciting but this book was excellent as always I loved all the creatures all the demon creatures the new demon creatures that we got in this book and um, some of them like the demons in this are all like they're basically like like animals um, and you get to know some of them really really well and there's just they have this way of kind of burrowing into your heart so 
you really care for them so sometimes if bad things happen to them it's like really really upsetting um, and I just really loved the way I was able to bond with so many of the different like creatures in this book. I really like Fletcher's own journey in this one and um, he kind of has to go through a few things. There was a few things that happened in the second book that carried on in this book but he kind of came into his own in terms of leadership in this book and it was really really great to see and um, there was really great battles at the end of this book as well and um, really ones that kind of left me on the edge and um, very much like touch and go with a lot of characters and um, there were some deaths that were really upsetting um, and I was really kind of really glued into the book. The only thing I'd say is that I was about 80% through and I was trying to figure out if this was definitely a trilogy because I was 80% through and I was like how can this wrap up in the next 20% like I, cu I couldn't see an end like I couldn't see an end where things could be wrapped up really nicely in that 20% and they did eventually like they were wrapped up in that 20% but I did feel like it was done very quickly in the last few pages um, and there was one of those kind of epilogues where everything kind of got wrapped up really really quickly where I would have liked to have seen that drawn out just a little bit. I enjoyed it overall and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. I'm looking forward to the next book that is set in this world. Even if it is going to be a prequel I will still be picking it up because I just love this world so much. And the next book I, I finished, I literally only finished a little while ago which is why this wrap up is going a little bit up a little bit later today because I want to finish this book before I um, recorded and it was The Secrets Between Us by Laura, Laura Madeline which is kind of a historical fiction um, book. This is one I got from Neck Alley and this one was just so lovely. This is set in two different times. It is set in 1943 and it is also set in 1993. So we are following two different characters uh, who are related. One of them is a girl called Celeste who is living in a very small mountainside village in France in 1943. Um, and we're seeing her point of view as Jewish people, um, groups of Jewish people are brought, um, her her, I should say her village is under the control of Italian soldiers um, who are working for the Germans during World War II obviously um, and uh, groups of Jewish people are brought into her village and you know they rent rooms um, and rent like little houses and villas and stuff in this village and kind of become part of the community and Celeste she is about 18 or 19 in it and she ends up uh, becoming friends with a young Jewish woman and basically this relationship ends up changing her entire life and um, it is a relationship of a kind that she's never felt before. Her point of view is in 1993 and we are following Celeste's, Celeste's uh, grandchild Annie um, and basically Annie is trying to find out what happened to her grandmother um, and she's kind of retake, retracing steps to try and figure out what happened all those years ago and what happened to make her grandmother eventually leave home um, and to, to the point where Annie grew up in London. Annie and her mother both grew up in London um, and she is basically just trying to find out who her grandmother was. Uh, it changes back and forth uh, chapter by chapter so um, the whole picture is kind of slowly revealed um, and this story went in a way that I really didn't expect it to but it went but I was really happy to see it go that way and um, because it was such a lovely surprise and I really really loved the relationships that were formed in this book I just thought they were so beautiful um, and so strong and you could really feel the love on the page I think between the characters and it was just really really lovely but at the same time I knew as a reader that there was no way this was going to end happily. I knew there was going to be heartbreak at the end of it so it almost made it tough to read as well because you knew that the characters were never going to get their happy ever after um, and we're kind of seeing different things happening from like Annie's point of view and we're knowing and you're kind of trying to like you're every time you go back to Annie and you find out something new your whole idea of what is going to be happening in the future of the 1943 story is changing so it's kind of like you're really kind of figuring out what is going to happen in the next chapter kind of thing um but I really really enjoy this I definitely preferred Celeste's, Celeste's chapters to Annie's chapters like a lot of the time I was reading Annie's chapters and I just wanted to get back to the 1943 time period because that was a lot more interesting to me and I felt a lot like I, as I felt a lot closer to Celeste as a character as well I thought her story was just a lot more attractive um, and a lot more powerful than Annie's was um, but this was actually a point like I had no idea about these about the Jewish people coming to these um, to this French village because this is based on a true story and um, the Jewish people coming to a French mountainside village and eventually having to run away from there having making the choice to either run away or stay and wait for the Germans um, when the Italians left and the Germans were coming back, coming into France um, and 
I just loved the fact that I learned something new in this as well while at the same time I got a really beautiful story Um, I think the end of it again a little bit like the battle mage the end of it wrapped up very quickly um, and I would have liked a lot more like there was a whole story I feel still to be told at the end of this book and I feel like we didn't get that story we were just kind of told a little bit in like one line what had happened to this one character um, and or these two characters really um, and I would have liked to have gotten a proper conversation or a proper few pages about what had happened to them rather than getting it in like one line um, and yeah, I, so I just feel like there was a little bit at the end that could have been a little bit better, um, because I feel like I feel like there was just a rush to wrap it in, to wrap it up in a really nice, neat little bow, where I feel like it could have it could have gone on a little bit longer, and I was so invested in the story, I wouldn't have minded it being another chapter or two long, so we could have gotten those stories a little bit more, and we could have gotten that extra little bit of information. So I gave this a four and a five stars overall, but I did really enjoy this book. It was a really beautifully told story, um, and as I said, a little bit of history that I never knew about, and I. I would definitely recommend this to people who enjoy reading um, World War II stories and World War II stories that are a little bit different to the normal ones. We so that's everything I have read this week. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Let me know what you guys read for your first week in 2018. I would love to know. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys again next week.